Hello, friends, and welcome to The Better Podcast with myself, Charlotte Wagerhall. You can also find me as Skinny Schedule on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and all the other socials. On today's show, we have Roth Reed Photography. Their goal is to ensure that everyone gets photos the way they should be. They specialise in celebrity-style photo shoots in exotic locations, and they're both geniuses that could make even me look good in pictures. Um, so on today's show, they're going to talk about all the secrets behind getting a good picture, so they can make you look taller, slimmer, younger, get a better natural smile, how to get a good selfie, and if you're a Kimmy K fan, how to even get a bigger butt. So that's what you're going to find out in today's episode. So a big welcome to Lincoln and Perrin of Rough Reed Photography. So a big welcome onto the show. We have Lincoln and Perrin um, who work on making every little girl's dream come true by doing celebrity style photo shoots in exotic locations. It looks amazing. If you ever want a vlogger to go for it, I'm more than up for it. Um, but I just wanted to start with, how did Rough and Reed become to be? How was Rough and Reed Photography born? Perrin? So I start. Um, so Lincoln and I are partners in business, but we're also partners in that we live together. We've been together about seven and a half years. And when we met, we realised that we both had an interest in photography and it just built from there, really. So, so where did you guys meet? We met at a, you were, you were on stage, Lincoln's a bass player and he was on stage and he came to speak to me afterwards and it went from there. I did. Right, oh, so like a, a rock star and a groupie, no. a fan, no? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, okay. <laughs> oh, that's a story that Lincoln would like everyone to know, Just, yes, but on record, right. Perrin is saying it's otherwise. <laughs> That's how we met, yeah. Yes. Oh, but you both worked for the NHS before, didn't yes. you? And you took a massive, yeah. like, complete career change. It's, so, so did you work at the NHS together, or? Well, Perrin worked there first. Um, I was working an office job, uh, and I've always been. I'm just a. I just, I just work in office, and I just tippy tap on a keyboard all day. It's, it's not a great. I play with spreadsheets, um, and Perrin came to realise that I was actually pretty good on a spreadsheet. I, I love a good spreadsheet. Um, <laughs> And she said, well, can you do a spreadsheet for me that does this? And I knocked her one together while we were watching Coronation Street <laughs> yeah. one, one evening. And she took it to work. And the, the people she showed it to at work said, bring him in. We've got a job for him. And then I had three years contracting at the NHS just wow. from doing a spreadsheet. That changed, didn't it? And then so, I yeah. left from being permanent to contracting. So we were both contractors in the NHS. But we really wanted to follow our dream, didn't we? Yeah. And so what was the sort of um, push, for want of a better word, to think, you know what, I'm going to do it. We live once, like, let's let's become photographers, let's let's do the dream. Well, for, for me it came because we had so many friends throughout probably my entire life that have gone on and done things, that have left work and they've gone on to do whatever they've wanted to do. One of them opened a pub in Sheffield on Ecclesall Road and it's, it's a great pub and... I thought, oh, well done, Tony, that's, that's awesome. And then other friends have gone and done other things. Oh, well done, that's awesome. Oh, I'm really pleased. I love it when people go and live the dreams and don't work for a living. <laughs> why am I working for a living? Why, why aren't I having to go at living my dream? Um, which had obviously been trying to do being a bass player, but it, that wasn't working. Um, and when we met Perry, of course, the photography was a thing that we both loved. So I thought, well, let's make a go of this. So do you remember the deciding factor or the deciding moment? The deciding factor was uh, my dad had been ill for a lot of years and I'd been his carer and as well as working. And then when he passed away, our lives opened up. And I think that when Lincoln's dad mm. had passed away the year before, and I think that was quite a big yeah. moment that we realised life was too short. But we also suddenly had all this time where we weren't running back and forth mm. to Lincoln should have taken care of my dad. So we we just thought if we're going to do it, and now's now, the time. now yeah. we're able to it's do really it. really common that. It just yeah. put everything in perspective mm. when yeah, you sort of lose well, a We realised that all, all their things that they'd saved and collected over the years most of it just junk, but some of it was what they enjoyed, and we were just throwing it away. So we were literally just packing up the life into black plastic bags and mm. throwing it on the tip. Um, and we didn't real. And the the thing for us, we we didn't have any great photographs of any great pictures. And we f we found that a lot of people, when the loved ones have passed away, the first thing they want to do is try and find some photos. good photos. Mm. And they might have got one or two on the phone. Oh, I'll print that off one day, and it never gets printed. 
It's a really good point because also the other question that people say, you know, if you're in a house fire and you could only recover one mm. item, I don't know, yes. 99.5% of people would probably say photos. Yes. yes. And yet we don't even print them off anymore. They're just no. on these gadgets and actually when you try and print them, they sort of, they don't print as well, do they? No. Um, which sort of leads us into sort of what we're sort of talking about today because you're going to be sharing with us some secrets on how to get good pictures, um, which I definitely could do a bit of help with. So what are some of your common um, mistakes that you see of photo taking or some of the like misconceptions? Um, so I think we were talking earlier Perrin about you don't like filters and for me I need a filter in the morning I need a filter without the makeup so why is the reasons behind no filters uh, the most important thing from a photograph from our perspective of a face is the eyes and, the, and that's the thing people always look at first and filters tend to blur the eyes a little bit they're not as sharp as they should be so I find that that that's mm. a real shame that that, that that takes away the sharpness of the eyes which makes sense actually because now now I'm thinking all a lot of the filters are like the sort of quite pale ones it's just yes. the style of my Instagram yeah. but actually I should yeah. ditch the Valencia because it's getting rid of the clarity of my eyes yes. yeah. never yes. thought about that yeah, yeah. and people everybody's beautiful in this world there's even people have got really scarred faces it's, it's beautiful it's their life story mm. it's their face and if yeah. you need a filter in the real world that's equivalent to a paper bag <laughs> <laughs> It is well, with some of the filters, like Snapchat. Yeah. We definitely don't look like some of those in the real world. But they, they, they can be quite fun, can't they? They're quite entertaining. The, the good ones are fun, oh, I yeah. Love, the, I, love the, the I love the cat and the ears and the little noses. I love those. We've all got a favourite. You can, yeah. you can see, can't you, everywhere that's doing a Snapchat filter. Yeah, they're yeah. lovely. We yeah, like mine's, those. mine's the princess with the tiara. I like yeah, a tiara. Yeah, you love that one, yeah, don't yeah. you? Look, and, he, and very pretty looks too. <laughs> and and you, who doesn't love a good face swap where you merge your faces <laughs> together? Oh, I think that's put me off having children with Adam. I don't think our children, future children, have not got many good hopes unless we put a filter on them (laughs) for that Um, and the other thing that we were both saying that's a really pet peeve you might have a beautiful photo but the backgrounds Mm. the backgrounds you big bugbear yes Um, yeah just be careful of things um, like quite often people are stood in their lovely dress they're heading out somewhere and they take the picture in the kitchen with the washing up behind them so that's always a shame so just you know pull pull your curtains across and stand in front of your curtains and and if it's a colour that complements what you're wearing even better or a wall white wall yep wall outside but it's just all those little ones that it just makes you laugh yeah. doesn't it when you, you see you know and there's been those sort of Instagram fails where people yeah. have had someone coming out of the bathroom or something in the background yes. or a pair of knickers on the bed or something yeah. it, it doesn't good look Nearest. good as you're on social take media a, they take a picture somebody's taking the picture and they're not wearing very much but they're taking yes. pictures of the person and, <laughs> and they don't know that they've been caught in the mirror though yeah. but they're, they're I mean they're funny. entertaining aren't they <laughs> yeah, but yeah, like, yeah. it's yeah. definitely not what you want in your professional sort of portfolio yeah. uh, and Lincoln you were saying you really hate blurry pictures yeah there seems to be a lot of blurry picture on the internet and, and I think because most people take the pictures when they're out having fun and out in pubs out in clubs and it's dark so the, the your, your phone's trying to take a picture in darkness so the aperture or the or the eye of the camera is open for a long time to let in more light so it can take a picture and while that eye is open you're moving around and jiggling around and consequently it's a blurred picture so what you're saying there is, is I should get ready earlier, get my pictures on my night out outside with some nice yes. sunlight and then go out. <laughs> exactly. The, the more light, the better. Even if you can find a light in the club, go and stand under the light and mm. look look up towards the light so the light's on look your face with light. your friends. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. F- yeah. Find some light. Yeah, and be, be mindful of shadows across your face. You may have like a beam and it's going and it yes. takes part of your of course, cuts across part of your face is dark shadow and then the light so just be mm. mindful of those as well I think you see I think the bars and clubs are missing something here they need to catch up with the times we need mm. some light boxes in these places <laughs> you know a really nice soft yes. light box the queues be massive I'm sure they could charge even a pound a time yeah. and because it, we have this huge selfie generation they could make like in fact let's go in yeah. on it let's That's create that idea, we're painting yes. that yes. Yes. don't don't Put this video out for quite some time because we're going to we look into that. That is yeah, perfect, that's isn't it? Idea, yeah, that yes. would definitely work. Yeah, I think so. And, and the other thing that's not working is um, LinkedIn and sort of professional sort of networking mm. um, for what websites. Yeah. Um, you were saying that you've been on it recently and you just happen to notice that there's a lot of um, not so professional looking pictures on a professional website. Is that right? Yes, I think with LinkedIn, you just have to be mindful that that's a first impression either a 
a potential client or a potential employ, employer could would see. So if you were going for an interview, you wouldn't turn up holding a glass of wine with a party hat on. And that's what they're looking at. That's the first thing they're going to see or you're not going to take your pet in with you or you know, or your crowd of friends. And I think just be mindful that that is, that the, you got to, how do I want to be looked if I was having an interview mm. or how do I want to be looked to, to possible clients? Makes so, yeah, difference. so keep, keep the uh, night out ones, the pet ones, the bikini holiday ones, yes. anything yes. like that. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I agree with that one. It's interesting. I've, I, I'm not on LinkedIn myself yet, um, but I've never even really thought about that. Like yeah. that's, that's a really good pickup. I can't, I'm surprised people haven't connected the dots with that one. Yeah, I was looking at the top 100 people who I might know uh, on, on my LinkedIn profile and 17 of the top 100 didn't even have a photograph. 17 out of the 17 top 100? 17 out of the top 100 didn't even have a photograph. Isn't that interesting? Because <clears throat> you just, I mean, on Facebook, if someone didn't have a picture, you just think it's a, a fake account. Yes. yes. You know, you think it's spam. Yeah. Yes. And That's true. And, and again, these are all professional, mostly professional people. Um, there was there were three that had been taken, or three that had been taken at a wedding, and there were full-length pictures of him in his groom outfit or his best man outfit with his rose in the lapel. Um, and again, because they're so small, the profile pictures on LinkedIn, a full a full length picture of you is even smaller. There's not enough space there for a head normally without it being a full length. Um, and there was there was about twenty taken in pubs and restaurants, uh, a whole host taken at home on the couch in the garden on a trip somewhere. Um, they're just not professional. I think out of the top hundred of people who I might know, there was probably three good ones. There weren't any great ones. That's amazing, that. And I wonder, out of that 17, I wonder if it's more of an issue if they don't like the photo rather than they've not bothered to put one on because mm. most of us, you know, mm. we don't really like having a picture taken, but <sighs> we'll come back to that. Um, <laughs> and the, the final sort of top mistake or, or, or pet peeve in mirror selfies. Tell us a bit more about this, Perrin. Yes. Um, so when people take a picture of themselves dressed up, ready to go out, and they take it in front of the mirror, but the, but the phone is in obstructing what they're wearing or obstructing their face even sometimes mm -hmm. and, and so um yeah i think most cameras now on phones they have timers so i would probably recommend using your timer on your phone to spend a little bit longer taking that photograph it really does make a difference I think. And, does, and you know what that's never even triggered in my head because i've done yeah. it before you know trying to get a picture of my outfit um to mm -hmm. share adam's not home so i'll just take it in the mirror and now you said that i'm like yeah why didn't i just use my timer that's a really yes. good point yes so i will be doing that yes um so i love that so far but let's get on to the juicy bits so we were talking about and i've asked my followers my audience about how to get a good picture and there's a, quite a few of the same topics kept coming that people wanted to know so we're hoping to pick your brains and share some okay. of your photography genius wizard like stuff um how could you make me look this is the main request slimmer younger and taller preferably all three one of them at least <laughs> you can go first with this one go. if you like you right, can go we'll, first. we'll start off with the slimmer one dead easy and and it's all about feeling uncomfortable in front of the camera Feeling uncomfortable. Or so feeling not, we're not talking getting in a bikini because I want to look slimmer here, Lincoln. No, no. We, we, so if you stand normally, you, you you tend to find that you're slumped, your arms are just dangling by your sides, uh, and we take your picture looking like that. You're going to look as wide as from the edge of the left arm to the edge of your right arm because there's no gaps, there's no space, just a full body and two full arms making you look wider than normal, bigger than normal. Um and again, but that's you relaxed. And I don't feel comfortable taking my picture like this. I want to feel relaxed, and, but it doesn't look good in a photograph. The ideal thing to do is put one foot in front of the other, push your butt back away from the camera. That makes your butt look slimmer because whatever's closest to the camera looks bigger. But butts are in right now. So we can talk about making your butt look bigger we as well. We'll come back to that. <laughs> opposite way, put your butt towards the camera. Um, <laughs> so push hips away from the camera, makes that those look slimmer. Turn your body 45 degrees, that instantly makes you look slimmer. Have the shoulder nearest to the camera, slightly lower than the shoulder that's away from the camera. Um, instantly you look slimmer and lift your arms away from your body. Put a little bit of space that's between a big the one edge of your arm A lot of us get the waist. fat arm, the flam, flam. <laughs> yeah. yeah, where you've got your clutch bag underneath and yes. you have to furiously yeah. try and chuck it down or find a surface to put it on. So actually moving your arms. But I've always done it sort of more to the side, mm. um, but actually you should sort of pull it further back your arm. That's right, isn't uh, it? The, the side is okay. You don't, you don't want it 
pointing towards the camera. So side right, is okay, okay, but pulling it back is probably even better. But you, again, this there's so much involved. It's if you put it too far back, it looks like you've got a stumpy little arm. <laughs> <It's, it's, laughs> yeah, whole another issue. You've just got to get things just right. There's so much to it. The, the books are filled with it, and we're we've only got probably another an hour, an hour here. And we don't have visual aids, but yeah, it's create some space between your body and your arm. Right, body and, and arm, that, I can do that. that immediately 45 makes degree slower. angle. Don't, yeah, and <clears throat> just don't, don't do that squishing in and pulling your shoulders up. Relax right, squash your, your arms down. and like bring it in. Yeah, relax yeah. your shoulders down. I know, definitely say one, th- one thing. If you forget all that, is to put a stretch in the b- very back bottom of your back mm-hmm. it makes all the difference. And when mm. we're taking pictures, particularly if it's a group picture and everybody's ready to go, then just say, stretch in the bottom, stretch your back, and then they see just immediately. Like yeah, yeah, sorry. <laughs> yeah, for those of you that are yep. listening to and this, I like, automatically <laughs> sat up right. I did what I was told. And it's wonderful when you have when yeah. you have a, particularly a family and there are about 15 of them and they all stretch up at the same time and then we take the picture. And does that make you look slimmer then as well? Because I guess you're creating more yes. space. Yes, you because you've not got all the big <clears throat> clump of belly as you, you sat. Sat clump comfortable. of belly, I sat, like sat that. Comfortable. You just got a big clump of belly in. <laughs> makes you look more confident. And, yes, it does. And, yeah, yeah, and it just it just makes you it just straighter, really, doesn't yeah. it? it? Just it's not slouching. Makes all the difference. So if everything else, if you forget everything else. Just always made to put stretch. a stretch in. So after a few seconds, I can remember that one. Yeah, stretch the yes, bottom of my back. Like, <laughs> so you've made me look. You've made me look slimmer. How do you make me look taller? I'm only five foot three. On a good day. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> so how do you make yourself look taller in pictures? Just for once. <laughs> um, it's all about lens choice, camera choice, angle choice. Um, bearing in mind whatever's closest to the camera is appears larger. Um, so you want to get a low down shot. So get as low as you can and take a picture of the person so the, the legs are going to look longer because they're closer to the camera. Right, so get them further away and get them lower down, is that yeah, right? Yeah, so if you yeah. get too close, the feet are going to look like clown feet because right. you're so close. So <laughs> back off, but still take it from lower down so you get a normal-looking person that's not got super long legs and a teeny-weeny body because um, you, you're getting longer legs because of the angle that you're taking the photograph at. So that will make you look taller. It make you look like you've got nice long legs. Mm. I like that. So you made me look slimmer. You made me look taller. What about then younger without Photoshop? Because most of us can't use Photoshop. We are now know that we need to quit the filter, so you're gonna have to make me look younger somehow. Um, natural light is better than flash. Flash creates shadows, and shadows also emphasise wrinkles or or fine lines, even very fine lines. It emphasises them. So natural light is better if you can turn towards the sun or turn towards a window that's got light coming in it. But you don't want really really harsh sunlight because that's going to make you squint. So you know, yeah, which the, brings out more lines. Unfortunately. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So you're looking for a nice soft light that you can look towards, and then. Um, and then and then take the picture, but if you're using flash, it's going to make it, it you know it's just going to make you look. It's, so it's always better to try and get some natural soft light. Yes, on there as well. Yes. Any other tips for sort of like looking younger then? Uh, I think oh. that's probably about it, isn't it? There's, yeah. yeah, there's the one um, with, the, with the head position makes a big difference. A lot of you know, a lot of us don't like this under, under here. I'm just pointing under the chin. The chin. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, chins in my case. <laughs> no, I do. Um, so if uh, if we call it, I like the, cause it's like the, the, the turtle, isn't it? So yeah. if you're going to have your pitch taken, if you push your head forward like a turtle would mm-hmm. do and then just slightly drop your head, then that will then define the line underneath your, your chin. Ah. But, w- but we have to say it. that's only if you're taking the picture from the front. Yes. Don't do it from the side because <laughs> you just look weird if you've got your head yes. stuck out from the side. <laughs> yes. So that's, that's only for the front because the photograph's 2D. Yeah, so yeah, of course. It's yeah. not going to see you sticking your head out. Yeah. And it's definitely worth practicing that. You know, practice that when you're taking your selfies. So it's just push that head out and then just, you know, then just push out and then just drop just slightly. Push not out a lot, and drop. Just a little yeah. bit. I, like yes. I can, I can yeah. remember some of these ones. Yes. So stand up. What was it? Stretch your back? Yeah, stretch yep. the base stretch. of your back. Um, stretch base the back yes, and um, stretch your neck and stretch drop. Neck, yeah, and relax your shoulders as well. And there's yep. lots of space between. Imagine your neck somebody's and got a big hook in top of, on top of your head and just lifting you up. Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, yeah. Yes. And relax. So, so pull up, 
but relax, don't put your shoulders up. Oh, that's a really good analogy, actually, yeah. I like that. That's something that you can remember after. Because a lot of us, unfortunately, unfortunately or not unfortunately, get pictures, like you say, when you're enjoying yourself on nights out and you might have had, I'm not a big drinker, but, you know, a couple of drinks or two and you're tired and you forget some of these rules. But just out of which I wasn't going to cover, but for the sort of Kim Kardashian-obsessed society out there, bigger butt, you just want the butt facing towards the camera. Is that how she does it, as well as all the surgery and the padding? (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Tends to be the mum. Yes. Just... T- again, turn 45 degrees, but... But forward. But, but, yes. but forward, yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's good to know these tricks yeah. if you ever need to use them. We've been you know. to do that one, have we? Could you give me a bigger butt? It's going to be isn't it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, well, yeah, well, yeah, true. I think it's just um, there's always that sort of trends that come around, yeah. and that seems to be on Instagram quite a big one. People tend to be that there was a lot of focus on the butt. You know, yes. things come in and out of fashion. There was bigger boobs in the nineties. It's bigger lips, I think, at the moment. I think butts are out, yeah. and it's all about the lips, isn't it? And yes. eyebrows. Um, oh, which and comes eyebrows. to then, oh, eyebrows, oh, extreme <laughs> eyebrows. Gosh, um, it's a selfie generation, yes. and one of the biggest questions I got asked in preparation for this: How do you get a good selfie? That is the the, the pinnacle of questions, I think. <laughs> I think putting into practice some of the things we've spoken about, definitely pushing that head forward and then dropping it, that will that will create those mm. lovely, nice, sharp lines and um, define your jaw. Um, I don't know really what else. Uh, timer. The timer. So there are yeah. a lot of things we've already, we've already self, spoken about. Great, like, but you can only get as much in the pictures. You can hold your arm out. And yeah. People don't have long arms. and yes. You can get a selfie stick, but she's got... It's, they're all the same. It's it's all selfie stick distance or arm distance pictures of mm. your head. Just stick it on a timer, put it on a shelf, put it on the floor, practice your posing. Yes, yeah. Go mad. Let's have some different selfies other than get to your camera a little bit Just better. Yeah, yeah. Do. yeah and that's true. Because most of them are on phones, aren't they? So most yes. of them, yes. you know, if you day to day is sort of phone photography and just taking a selfie yes. of that, so that helps. Don't don't look into the don't, don't look at one. yourself in the picture. Look at look into the lens when yeah. you're taking the the picture, and uh, and don't take a picture from from below. I was just about Locking to say that down, is the height because I've always naturally yeah. um, go higher up above me. Apparently, it makes you look slimmer and it's more flattering. It, is that correct? Otherwise, I've been doing it wrong this whole time. It depends really because if you go higher your forehead is going to be nearer to the camera which so isn't good because mine's quite wrinkled right. <laughs> so you have to get that positioned yeah. positioned right for you there is something that that actually they could do and that's there's called the the, the nine poses mm. that you can practice good idea yeah. the nine Talk poses about the nine poses Eight we dwarfs, talk about nine that poses. One on, did we? No, <laughs> what is the nine me. poses? Right. So if you imagine, um, uh, so if you have your, I'm trying to think how to put this because because it's difficult for those people listening. Just so take, a, th- just t- take a picture of yourself face on, first of all, and then completely pic- straight face yep. on when you say straight that. Yeah, yep. straight on straight face on. on. Then the next pose, just slight look slightly to the right take that picture and then move back through that centre pose and then look slightly to the left and take that picture. Then go up a little bit, so back into the centre. Yeah, lift your head up, centre picture to the right and to the left and then you're going to come down below that that first pose, Mm -hmm. bring your head down a wee bit and then take centre, left and right and that will give you, you'll be able to look at that then and you'll be able to see which side is your best side. Right, and is is that something that exists then? Most of us have a better side. Yes. yes. Oh, well, oh. We, generally, we it's the that. left side. Generally, it's the left side. Yes. That's interesting. Yes. yes. Is there any science behind what um, makes it a good side or a? Not as I know mm. of. No. Um, well, usually, models can be models can be photographed face on. What makes why models are so good is because their faces are symmetrical. I've heard that. Yeah, it's the more so, symmetrical someone yeah. is, the more attractive they are, yes. or something. So yeah. they can take a they can take an image straight on. And, but it's just a question of practicing it, mm. and just and, and it's probably easier if you get a friend to take your picture while you're doing that, rather than trying to do it yourself. And then have a look and see which is your best side. Ask your friends and mm. family which picture do you like best, and then you find your best side. Makes and sense. then then that's your go-to side when you're taking yourself. I like that, Adam. That's something that we're <laughs> going to be doing later. Thank you for that one. Um, another one I got asked sort of. Um, in regards <clears> to <throat> selfies, but not so much selfies as well, nose profile. So this was a really big one that what people mm-hmm. wanted to know. So if you feel like you have quite a large nose or um, bump or large nose profile, um, a lot of these um, people that ask asking this question, they don't like having the picture done because like, how can you sort of soften the profile of your nose or make it look smaller? Right. 
Oh, you can you want me to go one? for that? Yep. Okay. If you've got a big note, let's imagine they've got a whopping great honker. <laughs> <laughs> a whopping no, great... no, that's in our talk about. <laughs> <laughs> the, the great, Second thoughts. <laughs> whopping great beak. So the last thing you want to do is take a profile <laughs> picture from the side, like directly from the side. You've just got a great big nose stuck out the front. That's pretty obvious. If you turn your head again more towards the front, yep. there'll, there'll be a point where the the profile of your nose doesn't break the 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 profile of your cheek it doesn't stick out the side so much and that's what you want you want your nose to be fully encased in face um, but have both eyes visible because once you've got an eye not visible again the profile of the nose yep. is clouding it so that's what you see you're trying to see the eye you just see a whopping great hooter in your way so uh, move it out of the way get to see both <laughs> eyes and just again it's it's all about that so that not direct on at a slight angle, but not so much so that you can't see the other cheek. Yes. Mm. Ooh, I and like that's that. the same with actually taking any picture anyway, yeah. really. You don't want the nose to, to break this side of the cheek, do you? No. So. And not many people take good pictures straight on. It tends to be a better side. That's right, isn't it? Generally, yeah. yeah generally. Yeah. You'll, you'll, see which, you'll, you'll see which is your best side. And it, so if people have got a small chin... And as Link was speaking about earlier, the nearer mm. the camera, the bigger it is. So if you have a small chin, then push that chin towards the camera mm -hmm. and 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 mm. an angle back a wee bit. And you were saying earlier we should all take pictures up here. It all depends on the shape of your face as to where it's best to have your camera. Yeah. So that isn't really a, a you know a, a set rule that everybody should do that because if yeah. you've got a small chin, it's going to be a long way from the camera. And it's going to look even smaller. So you just need to adjust that and bring your chin forward, just like we were saying earlier about the forehead. That yeah, it makes sense better. now you're saying it. You see, I've never really considered it like that. You mm. sort of just take it and hope for the best. You think you've got a rough best side. And, but mm. actually now you're saying this, you sort of just need to sort of reflect yeah. on yourself yeah. um, and what maybe the bits are that you want to make bigger or smaller, <laughs> depending on what your goals are. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then just practice taking it. Uh, the final sort of like other big one we had, uh, my good friend Dan Sully, um, yeah, check him out on Instagram, he's brilliant. Um, his question was, and sorry Dan for saying this, but you've got a beautiful smile off camera. He gets on camera and he has, I'm going to call it the Chandler, mm. and he sort of grimaces yes. and he just can't seem to get that good natural smile on camera. Um, so uh, what, what do you do for the Chandlers out there, the Dans of the world? I think once you've decided to pose... So, so you're happy with the way you're going to look is just to turn away from the camera and then just look straight back into it and smile. It's much easier than staring down the barrel of a, of a lens and time ticking away and you're getting more and more nervous. But if you just look away and then naturally just look back, go back into your pose and, and smile. Yeah. I think that's probably the easiest yeah, thing to do. It'll make, it'll make you laugh doing it. Going, yes, it will. Ready. <laughs> and smile. Yeah, uh, and, then, and then and then you'll laugh, and then it'll be a natural smile. And that's true. Yeah, and if you take the picture, true. just as your your laughter's almost subsided, then you've just got that uh, that yeah. nice little smile just before it goes back to miserable and trying to think about how to do this picture. <laughs> yes, yeah, that's I like true. that. And there was another thing you were saying earlier, which um, I've used on photo shoots before. They used to say, "Smile with your eyes," mm -hmm. and and it works but like why is that like why do you ask people to do it because it does work yes it just um, ask them to bring the smile up to the to their eyes and if if you think about it you don't do automatically do it now, i don't know how it works mm. but but it does and you just said bring the smile up to your eyes and then you can just see their eyes light up and i think it's because they're overthinking yeah i think when you and particularly when you have your picture taken and you're being asked to look this way and look that way and put your chin down or just a yeah. little bit move your head a little bit and it's all these micro moves that you've got to make your mm. brain starts overthinking and you've got to try and stop that. And, yeah. and we're quite lucky, really, because we're both photographers. So if one of us is taking a picture of of our client and the other one makes them laugh, we can get that picture, which is great. And we're also on either side of the camera. So I may be taking a picture, but Link and Meg around the other side of the camera to be on the same side as the client to show them how to pose. And they don't feel so abandoned do they no. on the other side of the on the other Got side you. so the if camera. you can get someone to make you laugh if yes. you haven't try and remember to smile with your eyes bring yes. the smile up and look yes. away and smile yes. and then go for it and shoot uh, and yes. get the natural yeah. smile yeah absolutely i can't yeah i think that's probably the best way yeah i mean everybody can easily move the mouth into a smiling position but if your eyes aren't engaged mm. you just look weird yeah. it does doesn't it, Creep, and it creepy yeah weird. yeah 
Yeah. Like those weird <laughs> filters that smooth you out, which, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it, yes, yeah. yeah, it does look creepy weird. That's a <laughs> yeah, great example there, demonstrated <laughs> yeah. for those of you listening. Lincoln's, uh, looks like he's on a wanted poster there. <laughs> Not for the right reasons. Um, so you guys Sorry. are really fortunate enough to do these um, sort of celebrity style photo shoots um, in sort of like beautiful historic locations. There's that beautiful mm. place in York, is it? With the, um, That's the principal yeah, the, hotel. Mm. Wow. That's be- beautiful Victorian hotel that they've just uh they've just spent i don't know some millions haven't they yeah. doing it up but they've still kept the victorian look it's beautiful because i guess yeah. now the move is is that um a lot of us or a lot more people are starting to have more professional photos done because mm. um, it's quite a nice experience i mean I've, I've been on a few photo shoots at work and it was such a wonderful experience to have my hair and makeup done professionally have some really nice dresses and outfits to try on that i wouldn't have tried on before you know it was picked by yeah. a stylist and then get some really nice quality shoots out so it's i think it's a great sort of area and industry to be on and also i think you you got into it, your backgrounds in counseling isn't it perrin so you've got uh, quite yes. a nurturing side yeah so making people feel good is sort of the um, outcome of it. It is. We um, we realised that when we were uh, portfolio building a few years ago, that the longer people spent with us, the more relaxed they got, the more fun they had. And um, when they left, they went on. They, they left us on a high, mm. and that was the nicest thing. Yeah. to see and we didn't expect that and we talked more about that didn't we afterwards yeah. and we did anything we said we had to somehow capture this and we realized that we didn't want to be those photographers where you go into one room and have your makeup done then you shuffled into a studio for an hour and then out to choose your pictures mm. in a way we just you know we want to give people something more so what could people want to expect from a celebrity style photo shoot because that sounds amazing <laughs> it's the whole pampering really and the being the center of attention I think generally you go in a studio and the camera's pointing at you, but it's not about you. It's about the lights and the the studio and and the whole rubbish that goes with it. We like to to pamper you, so it is come along, do the hair and makeup, have a personal shopping experience at a boutique that Amazing. we work with, and choose a dress that you like. Try it on. Um, get you get to keep the dress. We book a room at the hotel. Uh, you have a hotel room that we put the makeup on in. You can stay there for the night if you like afterwards because it's paid for, it's yours. Um, if you decide you want to do a bit of a, uh, a, um, a lingerie shoot, you've got a hotel room you can do that in. Um, we lunch. put the dress on. We champagne. we we have lunch and champagne. Champagne, yeah, that was, yeah. yeah. We like some Definitely champagne. champagne. Yeah. yeah, cocktails, lunch, dinner. What a great experience. Breakfast. Yeah. Um, and beautiful pictures and amazing surroundings that you'd mm. probably only get to go in if you were getting married. But you don't have to get married to do this. No, that's it. Yeah, I loved all we, that on the we wedding day, and it's a shame that I'll never get to do that again. Otherwise, so <laughs> he's pleased to hear that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, oh god. It's, the thing is, as well, on the wedding day, usually taken away for an hour or an hour and a half to have those photographs taken um, with your partner. Whereas with us, you with us all day. So whether it's just you, if it's a mother and daughter couple, three friends, you know, you're there for the whole day. Mm. The whole day, and you're inside the hotel or on the grand staircase. So we're downstairs in the tile room, we're outside. It's we're all we're all over. Mm. Nice variety, different styles. Yeah. And we're yeah. posing you, we're posing you to suit your body shape as well. So and, and before all that, people come and have a consultation with us so we can find out exactly what they want, how mm. do they want to be photographed and, and they can ask all the questions yeah. that they want to ask and before. I, and I think the photographs they get at the end of the session, um, it, the whole day is not really about the photographs it's about the experience, experience. and the, the, the being a celebrity and look at me and all these people are walking around in the hotel looking at me having my picture taken oh my god I feel like a princess look at me dress <laughs> and, and the photographs just become a memory it's like oh I remember doing that one I remember doing that yeah. one they're not just pictures that you've had taken no they're and the memories it's a legacy to pass on and when you're old and wrinkly and on your way out and it's like Oh, I did look, that's my, yeah, my, I looked like that when I was younger. <laughs> and the grandparent, grandkids are going, oh, that's my grandmother. Oh, is she beautiful? Yes, she was. That was, again, a legacy. It's a pass that's on. Amazing. So where can people find you on socials? Oh, so we are on Facebook and um, we're on where, what am I not? Twitter, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. And we have our website. So it's just all Rothreed Photography. And And for those of you that are listening, how do you spell Rothreed? Oh, it's uh, R-O-T-H and then Reed is R-E-A-D. 
That's a good one. I did uh, do a typo with that and did double ED. <laughs> so I just thought I'd put that out there because that sounds like a perfect Christmas l- present. I'm going to put that on my Christmas gift list. Oh. Hint, hint, maybe, Adam. <laughs> if I've been a good wife this year, it's worth a trial for the other husbands out there. Um, so just bringing it to a close, any final tips that you want to offer for getting a good picture? Oh, final. For me, it's the posing and the lighting. Posing and lighting, Perrin? Yeah, I think professionally it's definitely it's got definitely got to be the pose and the lighting. I think if uh, I think if it's just you doing it with your phone, it's definitely find out which is your best side. Find out what your best side is. Do that move of nines and find out which is your best side, and then you'll always be confident and just Mm. just practice with it. And and you don't have to do what everybody else is doing. Work Mm. out what's best for you. Make make sure your background's free of clutter. Yes, that's it. Yeah, good lighting, free of clutter. Nothing in the picture that you don't want in your picture. Make sure have a look around first. And ditch the filter. Tidy your shoes away. Ditch the filter. Tidy your underwear. (laughs) Close your wardrobe doors. (laughs) And oh, the other one was um, she said earlier, which really tickled me actually, because I've probably done this before. If you're wearing a maxi dress. Don't cross your, your feet over. Oh, absolutely, yes. I've forgotten about that one. Yes, so if you're wearing a long dress, don't cross your feet over at the bottom of that. It just looks like your feet are on the wrong way around. I love that. And how many of <laughs> us out there have probably done that and never considered them and we're walking around with these weird flipper feet with our honking noses? No more. You are making the people of Sheffield and everyone else listening to this look beautiful. So thank you for that. Uh, so thank you for guys having me on the show. It's been absolutely amazing. Oh, I'm going to go off now and practice taking some good pictures. <laughs> so when my social feeds get a lot better, I've got you guys to credit for that. Uh, so thank, thank you. you very much for that, guys. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thank, thank you. you.